Well, just look at what we've got today. And the camera's playing up again. It is a skip tech two channel, I understand 50 milliwatt walkie talkie. Isn't that exciting? Mark spotted this on eBay. That's Mark G7NDJ. And he says, You haven't got one of these. So I thought, oh, I better get it. And I better service it now because he's coming this weekend and he'll beat me up if it's not done. So we'll take it out of its box. It's in a little leatherette case. Looks like new old stock, doesn't it, that? <laughs> Tries to get it out of the case. Oh! There we go. So we've got... On off volume, channel 14, channel 30, PTT, place to put a PP3 battery, 9 volt. Let's see what that says. Oh. 01074, so that's probably number 74, July 1988. What we haven't got is the instruction book, and we haven't got a circuit diagram. And I'm going to have to service this or else. So, I don't know where all the screwdrivers are either, so we'll just pause the video while we go and raid some. Okay, so having got the side off, when you've taken the two screws out, you have to take this back off, and this paper label, escution, that's a good word, isn't it? It's glued to there, so... That's not intended to be serviced, isn't it? So, we can see there's a microchip there, so let's take a bit more out. Hopefully that'll be some kind of FM demodulator I see. I think we take that bottom screw out and release the antenna. The antenna that's going round and round. This is fun. Now what's holding it? Is it the PTT bar? Okay. So it's a Samsung MC three three six one well it's gone into digital zoom that's not good is it it's got a electric condenser mic so it doesn't use the speaker twice um to be honest that's not that horrible is it i mean you know it's uh no it's that's not awfully built but the way the panel is, is atrocious. I presume that bit of tape protects something. And of course it's crystal controlled. 
so obviously this this and this and this are the transmitter that's going to be antenna matching coil and that's going to be the receiver and that's going to be the detector part of the receiver and that's going to be about the only adjustment of the actual receiver so having a look having looked on uh, Google, etc. Um, all I can find is a reference to some chap who's got one in his collection and he listed it as 50 milliwatts. I don't even know if our machine reads down to there. So, this ought to be a live broadcast because should I connect it to our power supply set to 9 volts, or should I set it to a battery? Do you know what? I think we'll set it to a battery. We'll pause the video and get a battery. Right, so having connected it to an RS 9 volt battery, which is worth more than the radio, and having connected a crocodile clip to the output and into our test set, because obviously there's no extension speaker thing, we'll switch the thing on. That's a good sign, isn't it? And we're going to transmit. Well, the, that kind of racket is indicative of faulty capacitors. I mean, this is 1988, did I say? So it's 2019. So it's 30 years old, even if it's brand new. Oh, I'm getting no transmit either. So I'll get out my Russian RF probe. I'll just turn that off a moment and sort that bit out later. But I've got to be able to sort my ears out. Ooh. So with the RF probe, That's at its most sensitive setting. Go back into transmit. There's a little bit of something, isn't there, there on transmit? Side of the channel. Bit of activity. Well, I think we're going to have to hook it up to our power supply just to see what kind of current it's, it's drawing.
Well, after five minutes of listening to that racket, after five minutes listening to that racket, whatever the capacitor was in the uh, amplifier has managed to reform itself. It was drawing 80 milliamps. So it's on the power supply now, and it's drawing 20 milliamps, which is better than the 80 milliamps it was doing. And that's channel 14 uh, off the frequency counter at a mind blowing 10 microvolts. There's 3 microvolts. Isn't that rubbish? And, and it's off frequency because the crystals have dropped with age and there's no way of bringing them up because there's no adjustment for the crystals. That's not unusual on hand portables which are a little more than toys. So I presume this has got some kind of squelch. Or has it? No. So going into transmit, I'm not seeing anything on the test set, only on the only on this meter. Put that somewhere near the frequency counter. Um, it's not often I use external count on this. Well, I'll tell you what, I can't do any harm by actually clipping it onto the aerial. Seven three one should be seven three one two five seven three one. So fast forward a few days later, and in conclusion, we changed the capacitors in the um, audio amplifier around the audio amplifier, and um, we changed the audio IC as well, and eventually got rid of the instability. So there you are. So there's no squelch. I'll just um, test it with a, another handheld in front of you. We did get about 20 milliwatts out of it on transmit. Testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And we'll do the same with the other way around. Testing one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. So yes, it uh, it does work, and of course, can you get that back together? No, because it's all we all we can do is put a spot of glue on that, because it's rubbish, isn't it? So in conclusion, it's clearly not intended to be serviced. And although I've seen worse build quality of the actual insides, the way that case is, is probably the worst apart from that. I think when Mr Chippy comes at the weekend, I'll send him for a little walk quarter of a mile down the road to the level crossing and see if we can get him from the base station to that quarter of a mile away. And that'll probably be about par for the course on that. It sold us 50 milliwatts. I couldn't get more than 20 milliwatts out of it. But it isn't faulty, you know, so it's not like changing parts would make that any better. I hate to be judgmental, but I wouldn't recommend that to anybody. And uh, as you know, we do servicing uh, to the um, two-way radio trade. But I certainly wouldn't uh, have any of them coming for repair. And anyway, it wouldn't be worthwhile because the service charge would be more than the thing costs. So really, that concludes it. Uh, the deviation wasn't adjustable but was within the limits uh, there isn't a squelch um, we did manage to improve transmit to 20 milliwatts from about 
five milliwatts as it came to us. Um, receive started off at 10 microvolts and we got it down to about three microvolts. So there you have it, the Skip Tech, <laughs> uh, the Gson KT002 with Skip Tech written on it. Thank you for watching.